Hi, my name is Emma Gautier, and I'm a research associate with the Community Broadband Networks team at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Uh, the Institute for Local Self-Reliance is an organization that advocates for building local power to fight corporate control. Next slide, please. So I want to start off with something that a lot of you probably already know, which is that it's really challenging to find um, information about internet service. Uh, whether you're shopping for new service or whether you're trying to f figure out what it is that you already pay for. By show of hands, how many folks here aren't sure whether you have a data cap on your internet service at home? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so there are some hands out there. Um, that's just one example of a piece of information that a lot of people don't know about their internet service. Um, in fact, we measured how difficult it is to find information about internet service and found that it's not easy at all. Uh, next slide, please. Thanks. The Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act mandates that providers display service information using something called the Broadband Nutrition Label, which is similar to the um, nutrition label you find on the back of packaged food in grocery stores. Next slide. Um, so here's why transparency is important for digital equity. First, there are implications that affect folks on the individual level or the customer by customer level. So the broadband label makes information more accessible for people with disabilities, more accessible for people who don't speak English, um, but better information also makes it easier to budget for service. Things like surprise fees and introductory rates hit low income families the hardest. Then there's structural implications that affect the market as a whole. So one is provider accountability. Uh, the broadband label is something that customers can point to that clearly represents what it is they're paying for, and then they can compare this to what they're actually getting. And often those two things aren't exactly the same. Um, good information also helps entrepreneurs and communities make decisions about investing in new business. We know that entrepreneurship is a really important part of cultivating competition and advancing a market, uh, and poor information is likely to get in the way of that. And finally, transparency is good for research and policy guidance. If there's good information out there about pricing and speed, it's gonna be easier to identify what inequities exist and address them through policy. So, what can you do about this? Next slide, sorry. Uh, what can you do? Uh, three things you can do. You can add content about the label to any digital skills curriculum that you're developing so people know how to actually use it and it's useful. Um, you can advocate for transparency through public comments. There's not an active, um, there's not an active request for comments right now, but the FCC still is taking comments, so you can, you can write to the FCC about this. Um, and you can sign on to other folks' comments as well if you don't have the capacity to write your own. And third, you can follow groups like the ones I've listed here, uh, NDIA, obviously, Benton Institute for Broadband, Consumer Reports, and Free Press if you want to learn more information about how to advocate for transparency. Transparency is both helpful for customers in the short term and ensures that policy efforts are informed and working to close the digital divide in the long term. Thanks.